In February of 2019, the Lord gave me the theme for our 2020 retreat. It's time. He knew what this year was going to look like, and the Holy Spirit has been preparing us for such a time as this. In 2018, our theme was called. In 2019, it was empowered. We have been called. We are empowered. Now, ladies, it's time. Welcome, ladies. We are so glad you're taking this time to retreat away with us. Now hold on, this is an e-retreat, right? Yes, yes, it is. Then I can go anywhere and retreat. Mm -hmm. I'm liking it. I'm always up for an adventure. I know you are. <laughs> so Linda, where would you take the ladies? Hmm. Tahiti would be nice. Ooh. Yes, I'm ready for a beach. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Val, where would you like to take us? I always love Italy. Yes. Can't get enough Italy. Can't get enough Italian food. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and what about you, Miss Terry? <laughs> where would you like to retreat? Well, obviously, some place that involves some camel riding. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, isn't he so cute, though? I mean, really, camels are quite amazing. And one of my favorite quotes is, we are designed for camel riding. In other words, camels ride in a caravan, and it's just a great reminder for us in ministry that we are meant to do ministry yes. and life together. We are not meant to do it and travel it alone. Yes. We are designed for community. That's one thing Just Between Us is all about, connecting and building community with one another in life and ministry. That's right. So let's do it. Let this e-retreat begin. Sounds good to me. Okay, I gotta get some coffee. Oh, I gotta get my cup. I need my water. Hi ladies, I have the honor of introducing our worship leaders, Nerva and Seth Reddy. They are new to our district, but not new to ministry. For many years, they sang for some of Christian music's leading artists. They have two albums of their own, Never Alone and One Voice, which was released earlier this year. Nerva and Seth serve as worship pastors of New Life Church in Dublin, California. We are honored to have them with us. So ladies, get ready, prepare your hearts as we worship together. Hi ladies. Nerva Reddy here from New Life Church. As women in ministry, we've been called, empowered, and chosen by God. And now it's time. It's time to focus our hearts and our minds on our Savior. So I invite you to join us in a time of worship. Even though we're separated by circumstances, we can be united in our praise. So would you join us as we worship and praise our Savior? Oh, come on, let's lift our hearts and worship today. Oh, I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, the treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along. Put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Sing there's nothing Oh there's nothing Better than you There's nothing Better than you There's nothing I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you see them all, and you still call me friend, cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing Sing it out. better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Oh, no. 
he's the only one who can make a way out of no way bring light where there's darkness he's our salvation courage in the midst of our fears so will you join with me in making this song personal and singing it with your heart open wide to the Lord today Stop working, 
You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't feel it, you're working Even when I don't see it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you never stop You never stop, you never stop Come on, proclaim it, lift it up that we can worship him wherever we are at. Thank you, Nerva and Seth, for leading us. Next, we have Robin May. Robin and her family live in Atlanta, Georgia, where they planted a church. She is also an author, a mental health therapist, TV host of a local program called Intentional Living with Life Coach Robin May. That's a pretty impressive bio. But what is equally impressive and more important is Robin's character. I met Robin on March 12th, the first day of the first phase of COVID's restricted gatherings. She flew from Atlanta only to be told we were working on getting her a ticket to fly home. And what I saw of Robin in those 24 hours was that her character rose above the chaos she flew into. She was gracious, easygoing, fun, inspiring, and so positive. She was even gung-ho to record podcast at midnight, her time. We had a great day. So I want you to give it up for my sister, Robin May. Ladies, I am so thrilled to be with you. Listen, I'm gonna actually call you my sisters and let me tell you why we really are sisters. Okay, so back in March, I was minding my own business. I love to say that. Back in March, I flew all the way to California to be with you all. And I landed and found out that the Sweet Life Conference, which is what I was going to California for, that it had been post Honed. And so I had an opportunity to spend some time with my girl Terry, and I was able to meet some of you virtually in the Just Between Us podcast. So some of us have met already, so we are officially sisters, okay? Now, I have to give a shout out to Debbie for even allowing me to be introduced to all of you. And again, I got to give a shout out to my girl Terry because she did not know me, she had never met me, and she actually let me stay at her house. And when I tell you, I felt like it was a home away from home. I was able to get away and just breathe a little bit, and so it was really good to be there. And so I officially consider her my sister. Sister, so y'all are my sisters too. I'm so excited to dive into the word that God has given me for all of you today. But before I get started, can you do me a favor? Can you just take a deep breath? Do it one more time. Take a deep breath. Listen, the last few months, well, not the last few, all of 2020 has been quite 
interesting, and I don't know what level of leadership you serve, but whatever leadership it is, it is a lot to carry your own stuff, trying to figure out things for yourself, and then also trying to figure out things and help people that you lead. And so sometimes we just have to take a deep breath. And sister, because remember we're sisters, I need to remind you that there is nothing selfish about self and soul care. Now those are two different things. I'll come back another time to break that down. But self and soul care are two different things, but there is nothing selfish about neither one. So I remember when I had my first daughter, I now have three girls, their ages are six, 11 and 13. So I hope that caused you to go ahead and fall on your knees and say a word of prayer for my husband and I. Six, 11 and 13. And I remember when my 13 year old was first born, I am from Dallas, Texas. I live in Atlanta. So we were flying to Dallas to visit my parents and I had my baby, my new baby in the seat with me. She was eight months old, I remember. And I remember the stewardess coming over the um, intercom and saying, all right, if something happens to this plane, you have to put the mask on yourself first before you put it on anybody else. And I remember thinking, oh no, sister, because if something happens to this plane, I'm gonna take care of Ryan, Ryan is my daughter. I'm gonna take care of Ryan before I take care of myself. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit reminded me, Robin, if you are laid out, there's nothing you can do for Ryan. And so ever since then, I've called that oxygen, therapy. There is nothing selfish about oxygen therapy. So as you are leading, as you are supporting your husband, as you are serving in ministry, I need you to do a little oxygen therapy. All right. Now I'm actually a mental health therapist. And so you can tell people around you, hey, a therapist gave me permission to do a little oxygen therapy. Now, I want you to listen to this session with two intentions. I want you to first just listen for yourself because I believe what I'm going to share is going to encourage your soul. But I also want you to listen for those you lead. And I want you to share this message with them because I truly believe we can help one another. All right. Are you ready to dive in? All right. I am ready. I want to talk to you about it's time this time. Now, if I was there with you, I was going to ask you to repeat after me. So I need you to do that, whether you're in your kitchen, if you're in your living room, if you're in your office, I need you to repeat after me. So I want you to say, it's time this time. Oh, I hope you're not leaving me hanging. It's time this time. Turn with me to Luke chapter five. We're going to start reading at verse one. You ready? Let's read. One day. As Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. Verse 2, he noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. Verse 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper. Oh, y'all are going to like that. Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Verse five, master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. So listen, Luke is giving an account of what was happening during that time. He's wanting you to know what was happening during this part of Jesus's journey. When I flew to California, I had an opportunity to go to the NCN office and I was able to walk down a hallway and on this hallway, it had the entire story of the assemblies of God. And I was able to see pictures and see a timeline and Terry was able to point things out to me. This is when this occurred. This is when this occurred. I was able to see the journey. Well, that's what Luke is doing. He's wanting you to see the journey. He's saying, oh my God, let me tell you what happened. And so as I read this, I want you to picture the journey. So I'm going to read it to you again. Verse one says, one day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, if you have to, I want you to Google a picture of the Sea of Galilee. I want you to really get it. Great crowds pressed in to listen to the word of God. 
He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Now, when a fisherman is washing his nets, it's in order to get all of the debris out of them. So when they are fishing, whether they catch something or not, dirt gets in there and just junk. And that's their money maker. So they would clean out the nets. Now, that's a word for some of you right there. Because even when they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, even when they were working, there was time that mess got in their nets. See, you thought once you got saved, you wouldn't have to worry about mess anymore. You thought once you got that thing under control, you wouldn't have to worry about mess anymore. And I'm here to tell you, unfortunately, even when you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, sometimes there's some mess that can get caught in your net and it's up to you to clean out your net. But that is not even why I'm here today. Turn with me, keep going to verse three. Verse three says, stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Verse five, master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. Y'all, that gets me every time. He says, let the nets down again. Verse 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper. I want you to read verse 4 again. When he had finished speaking, he said, now go out where it is deeper. Y'all, many of us ended 2019. Now we're almost in 2021, but many of us ended 2019 ready to walk into this amazing 2020. I mean, what is better than 2020? 2020 vision. My husband declared for our church, my husband and I have been married 18 years and we pastor a local church in our area. We just celebrated three years. And so he pastors, we pastor a local church in our city. And my husband declared that for 2020, it was the year of our clear transformation. I'm going to tell you something that was a prophetic word because I'm sure many of us are seeing very clearly now so we entered into 2020 with big dreams with big ideas with big goals and then our lives were turned upside down not just your life not just my life, not just the people that you lead. All of our lives were turned upside down. At some point, it seemed like every week something unexpected was happening. Something unbelievable was happening. If it wasn't the loss of an icon, if it wasn't the global pandemic, if it wasn't racial unrest, it seemed like almost every week something else was happening. This year, if it was going to go down, it went down. And if we are not careful... We may get consumed in the chaos we see all around us and we miss the move of God right before us. God is sovereign and he is orchestrating something on your behalf. In the midst of all of this, he still wants to do a transformation in your life. But many of us, if we're not careful, we could miss it. I want you to get ready to write this down. Go ahead and get ready to tweet it. I want you to hear this. God has promise transformation, but transformation does not happen in the shallow waters of your faith. Can I give that to you again? Transformation does not happen in the shallow waters of your faith. It is going to require that you go out where it is deeper. Listen, the way you used to pray is not going to bring about transformation. The way you used to talk is not going to bring about transformation. The way you used to read a verse a day to keep the devil away, that's not going to bring about transformation. If you want 2020 to make sense to you, sis, if you want it to make sense, I am telling you, you're going to have to go out where it is deeper. Now I want to warn you, I don't want you to say I didn't tell you. When you go out where it is deeper, it can be a little bit scary. Listen, the waves are choppier out there where it is deep. <laughs> Sharks reside out in the deep. 
When you get out in the deep, you can't see the shore. So going out where it is deeper could be scary and it should be scary, but you got to feel the fear and do it anyway. Listen, verse four, when he had finished speaking, he said, now go out where it is deeper and let down your to catch some fish. See, he did not send them out blindly. He told them in advance what he was going to do. He's saying, yes, the waves are choppier out there. Yes, there are sharks out there, but the blessings of God are out there too. The favor of God is out there too. Peace is out there too. Clarity is out there too. When you go out where it is deeper, he's already telling you out there is where the transformation is going to take place. Jesus told him, go out where it is deeper. Verse five, Simon said, Master, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. Mm. If you say so, I'll let the nets down again. If you say so, I'll do it again. Now, remember, I want you to put yourself in that moment. I want you to imagine that you were at the Sea of Galilee. I want you to imagine that you are Simon. Simon knows fishing. He has been fishing. He is a fisherman. And here comes Jesus, who is a carpenter. And so I can imagine Simon was feeling like, really, Jesus, really? You want me to go out there again? I've done this before. I've tried it before. He's saying, I've asked for that opportunity before. I've prayed for that open door before. I've believed you for that before. I've tried to forgive them before. I asked them to forgive me before. I've tried to change that behavior before. I've tried to have hope before. I've tried to save my money before. I've applied for that job before. I've tried to end the relationship before. I don't know about you, but I've been Simon before. But Jesus is is calling him out into the deep. And Simon responded, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. Verse five, I love to read it in the Amplified version. Listen to this. Master, we worked hard all last night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word, I will do as you say and lower the nets again. Y'all, 2020 tried it. 2020 has tried to take some of us out. And many of us, like Simon, are saying, listen, I have worked hard already to the point of exhaustion. But I think like Simon, we must say, but at your word, I'll do it again. Master, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. See, Simon could have ignored the request of Jesus, but we got a clue about why he did not because he knew who Jesus was. He called him master. So in other words, he knew who he was and so he could take him at his word. Listen, I love Jesus so much because he gave that word, not just for you. He gave it for me. God is speaking to us. Listen, I don't know about you, but he put it in here for me. He knew that 2020 was going to be rough. He knew it might touch on some old wounds, but he's saying, will you take me at my word and do it again? I don't know where he's asking you to do it again. I don't know if it's in your marriage. I don't know if it's as you're raising your children. I don't know if it's how you're showing up at work. I don't know if it's how you're showing up in ministry. All I know is he's saying, I know you are tired, <laughs> but will you do it again? Oh, y'all, it gets good. It gets good. Let's keep reading. Verse six says this. And this time, hallelujah, hallelujah. It says, and this time their nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. Ah, and this time, I can't move past that. I don't know if you're in your bedroom. I don't know if you're in your kitchen. I don't know if you're in your living room, in your office, or in your car. I just need you to say, and this time. The theme for this gathering is it's time, and I'm telling you, it's time this time. I know the enemy wants to convince you that 2020 is a wash. I know the enemy wants to convince you that the rest of this year is still going to be crazy. I know he wants you to think that pain is your only purpose. I know he wants you to think that God is not going to restore, but I'm here to tell you, and this time, this time, it's time, this time, verse six says, and this time, their nets 
were so full of fish, they began to tear. When you do it again, this time you're doing it in, your, in his strength. Mm -mm. You're doing it in his strength. See, Simon had been fishing, but he had been fishing in his expertise and his experience. But this time when he went out there, he was under the anointing and the authority of God. Listen, this time you're not doing it because you're so smart. This time you're not doing it because of your connections. This time you're not doing it because of your checking account. This time you're doing it because you know Jesus is beckoning you. And this time your nets are going to break because of the abundance of your blessings. Hallelujah. Let's read verse seven. A shout for help brought their partners in the boat and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Y'all, he had so much fish, he had to call his boys to come and help him. Y'all better tell the people around you, hey, you better stay connected to me because I'm going out where it is deeper. And this time when I go out, God is getting ready to do something so big. And it's not just for me. It's going to be for you, too. I'm going to have to yell out to my girls. I'm going to have to yell out to my partners. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get some of this fish. Verse eight. Come on, y'all. Verse eight. When Simon Peter realized what had happened. Uh, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, oh, Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. Verse nine, for he was awestruck. Come on, clap your hands wherever you are. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught and were the others with him. It says, for he was awestruck. When you read it in the Amplified Version, it says, for he and all his com companions were completely astounded. Ah, in the message it says, when they pulled in that catch of fish, awe ah, overwhelmed Simon and everyone with him. I don't know about you, but I am ready to be awestruck. I'm ready to be completely astounded. I am ready to be awe ah, overwhelmed. I want you to understand that I get it. 2020 has been quite interesting. I know some of you have cried some nights. Some of you have had some significant loss and you still have some questions, but I need you to understand this. You don't know me, but I don't believe in name it and claim it. I don't believe in saying stuff just to get you hyped up. I don't believe that God is a genie in a bottle. But what I do know is that God has some promises for you. He has some promises for me. He really does want to blow your mind. But the only way you are going to end up awestruck is if you go out where it is deeper. You cannot get to verse 9 by skipping over verse 4. You have to do verse 4 if you want to experience verse 9. Listen to me. You can be utterly astounded. You can be awestruck, but you got to be ready to go out to where it's deeper. You can't say, I want to be awestruck and I want to stay in the shallow waters of my faith. No, you got to go out where it is deeper because out there is your obedience. And when you obey, he's going to leave you awestruck. Ah. Verse 11 says this, and as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. My dear sisters, it really is time this time. You have been called. You have been empowered. And now it is time. It is time for you to go out where it is deeper. It is time for you to let down your nets again. And this time, God is going to leave you utterly astounded. He's going to leave you utterly astounded, but I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to let you know what you need to do because, see, we hear these things and we're thinking, OK, I'm ready. Yes, Robin, I'm going to go out where it is deeper. Now, what do I do again? See, you're going out where it is deeper so that you can tap into your purpose because it is time this time for you to tap into your purpose. And it's not just a random purpose. It is a purpose that has been ordained by God. It is a purpose that's going to further the cause of Christ. But many times we don't know how to do that. So I got your back. I'm about to show you how to do it. I'm about to give you seven steps 
to walking out your purpose, like these seven steps of what you're going to have to do while you're out there where it is deeper. Don't just go out there where it is deeper and just float around and just fight the waves. Here are seven things you need to be doing. I want you to jot these seven down, things down. I want you to ask some girlfriends to watch this. I want you to share this. You can re-preach it to them if you want to. I want you to share these seven ways with them, and I want y'all to talk about it. Talk about the place where you get stuck. Talk about the place where you need some encouragement. Here are seven things you got to do, and then I'm going to be done. Number one, number one, when you go out where it is deeper, when you let down your nets, number one, you have to accept that walking out your purpose should not be optional. I want you to understand that, especially for you as leaders, going out where it is deeper should not be optional. You are an important peace to the puzzle of the kingdom of God. And when your peace is missing, the puzzle is not complete. I need you to get in position. Sis, I need you to get in position. I need you to stop sitting back. I need you to understand that you have a strategic role. Your life has purpose. God crafted you and created you and aligned you for a purpose. And so you have got to accept that walking in your purpose should not B, optional. Number two, I need you to ask God for his divine guidance. Sometimes we are guilty of doing than asking. No, I need you to ask him in advance for his divine guidance. Remember, this time when Simon let down his net, he was not doing it because of his experience. He was not doing it because of his expertise. He was doing it under divine guidance, and that's the same thing for you. I need you to ask God to direct you. I need you to ask him to guide you. I need you to ask him how he's wanting you to show up. I need you to spend some time with your father. Carve out some time. Go into your closet. If you have to turn your car into your closet, do whatever you got to do, but you need to ask him for his divine guidance. Number one, accept that walking in your purpose for you especially should not be optional. You should recognize it's mandatory. Number two, don't get ahead of God. Ask him for his divine. Number three, I need you to acknowledge what comes naturally to you. Listen, if nobody has told you, look at me in the eye. If nobody has told you, you are a special gift of God. You are a gift of God here on this earth. Your sisters need you. Your brothers need you. The kingdom of God needs you. I need you to acknowledge what comes naturally for you, your skills, your strengths, your gifts, even that pain. God even wants to use that pain. God was into recycling before recycling got good. I need you to acknowledge what comes naturally to you. God blew Simon's mind by doing what he knew to do. Simon knew how to fish, but God blew his mind doing what he naturally knew how to do. Some of you are ignoring and running away from what comes naturally to you. You are naturally outgoing. You are naturally stylish. You are naturally funny. You are naturally sensitive to how other people feel. I need you to use all of that. Acknowledge the gifts he has given you. Hmm. We don't need you playing copycat. We don't need you trying to be like anybody else. What you got, girl, is good, and it's different from anybody else's. I don't care if y'all still in the same field. It's different from anybody else's. You are unique. Ask God for what comes naturally. I want you to make sure you're using it and acknowledging what comes naturally to you. Number four, I want you to align yourself with people who are serious about the kingdom of God. We were not created to do life alone. Can I tell you this? I believe as a mental health therapist and the work that I've done, I've sat with so many people for many, many, many years. And I truly believe that the enemy uses offense. He uses hurt feelings. He uses disappointment to cause us to isolate. And God never intended for us to live on isolation island. He intended for us to live in community. Listen to Proverbs 18, 1. It says, a man who isolates himself mm, seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding but in expressing his own heart. Ah, listen, if you are isolating, 
That means you're raging against wise judgment and that you are expressing your own heart. I want you to align yourself with the people God has called you to walk with on this journey. You have to be in community. When you're out there where it is deeper, you have to be in community. And let's take that to the next level, number five. When you align yourself with people who are serious about the kingdom of God, I then want you to agree to being held accountable by at least three people. And there's a reason why I'm saying three people. I want you to be held accountable by at least three people because that gives you different opinions. And I want you to make sure, I call it my advisory board. I want you to make sure that you're agreeing to be held accountable by at least three people. Can I tell you what's a game changer in your life? I don't have time to go into it right now. But all of us need a safe space. You need a safe space in your marriage. You need a safe space as you're raising your children. You need a safe space at work. And you show sure enough, show sure enough, need a safe space in ministry. A safe space is the place where I can be vulnerable, where I can be transparent, where I can be flawed without fear of judgment, without fear of retribution. It's where I can let my guard down so that I won't stay the same, but I have the support so that I can change. And as leaders, listen to me, we are charged with ensuring that those we are leading are planted in their own safe space. We've all read Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron, but have you ever read it in the Amplified Version? It says this, but do you remember that as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens and influences another. Let me give that to you again. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens and influences another through discussion. Oh, that's so good. Listen, you have to be around people who can influence you through discussion, but it's not just influencing you randomly. Remember the other one, number five, is that you had to agree. No, number four was that you have to align yourself with people who are going to walk in the kingdom. So number five, when you're agreeing to be held accountable, you got to be held accountable so that when you're in those deep discussions, it's people who are pointing you to Christ. Listen, as you are letting down your net for a catch, you got to be connected with folks who are going to hold you accountable. It is dangerous to live an unchecked and unaccountable life. Oh, I just want to go here real quick. Let me tell you how you need to consider if you have the circle. When was the last time the people in your circle told you the truth about you? How many times have they said, oh, you my girl, but girl, now when you said that, now I'm not talking about those people who are trying to bring you down. That's why you got to be careful about your circle. You got to be surrounded by, pe by people who want the best for you, who want the best for you, not just for you, but for the glory of the kingdom of God. Number six, number six, as we go out where it is deeper, as we are letting our nets down for a catch, we're going to accept that walking in our purpose should not be optional. We're going to ask God for his divine guidance. We're going to acknowledge what comes naturally to us. We're going to align ourselves with people who are serious about the kingdom. We're going to agree to be held accountable. And then number six, we're going to anticipate roadblocks. Do you remember when I told you that I didn't want to sugarcoat it for you? Because out there where it is deeper, sharks are out there. <laughs> out there where it is deeper, the water does get choppy. Out there where it is deeper, you cannot see the shore. And so I didn't want you to be thrown off. But I need you to understand, God already told you. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But he also promised you that he has already overcome the world. He already told you, I'm going to go before you. He already already told you no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. He already told you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I love in John it says this, didn't I tell you that you would see the glory of God if you would just believe? Listen sis, don't be dismayed. Don't be dismayed. <laughs> Don't be dismayed. Don't be shocked. Stuff is going to happen. Now, if you were there with me, I would tell you, turn to your neighbor and say, stuff is going to happen. But God has you. He has you in the palm of his hand. You just have to anticipate the roadblocks. Now, hear me. This is not about you being paranoid. 
This is not about you just thinking about the worst. You just got to know this stuff is going to happen. But he already got your back. He already told you that I have already overcome the world. We're just about done. Here is the last one. As you go out where it is deeper, as you let your nets down for a catch, I need you to be careful about alienating yourself. You got to get away from stuff, people, even your own thoughts that are toxic. You got to get away from that toxicity. Okay, you didn't believe me. First Corinthians says this, don't be fooled. Bad company corrupts good character. Proverbs says, walk with the wise and become wise. Go ahead and associate with fools. You're going to get in trouble. That was my drama. Proverbs says, another verse says, leave the presence of short-sighted fools, for you will not find knowledge or hear godly wisdom from their lips. When you go out where it is deeper, remember I told you your nets are going to get filled, but you got to clean out all of that junk. Your purpose is too precious to risk it with foolishness. You even have to monitor the way you feel think. You have to control your own internal dialogue. You have to get away from that toxicity because that toxicity is going to make you drown. When you go out where it is deeper, you've got to alienate yourself from toxicity. Sisters, it really is time, this time, this time when you let down your nets, there is a blessing that God has for you. This time, when you let down your nets, there will be blessings on the heels of your obedience. It's time for you to walk out your purpose. How do you do that? You accept. You ask. You acknowledge. You align. You agree. You anticipate. And you alienate. It has been my pleasure to be with you today. And it is my heart's prayer that you truly understand that it is time, this time. God bless. Oh, my goodness. So many good things. It's time, this time. Okay, let's be honest. We're taping this like we're watching this live, but spoiler alert, we're not. <laughs> and I've listened to this message many times. And every time I do, I glean another truth. And that's the beauty of God's living word is that it gives us life every time we read it and every time we hear it. Amen. So as we are gathered here for our table talk, let me ask you, what was a life-giving truth you received from the Bible passage? And I'm going to start with you, Linda. Well, um, Peter is always a colorful, a colorful uh, character mm -hmm. uh, in the Bible. And um, a lot of times uh, when he acts or reacts, it's kind of like from the flesh, from mm -hmm. his humanity. Yeah. And so um, when he told, when he was talking to Jesus and he said, Master, we fished all night and caught nothing but if so we will let our nets down again well again he was operating in his humanity mm -hmm. and um i find that a lot of times in my life i operate in my humanity mm -hmm. but what it does it negates the power of the divine mm -hmm. and so yeah. As we, um, when we move in our humanity, we are inhibiting uh, the divine to come forth. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. And that's where that's the miracles are. Yes. That's right. where you get so many fish in your net, although you've <laughs> caught nothing a few minutes ago, yeah. now your yeah. nets are ripping because you've gone from humanity to the divine. Oh, that's, that's good. good. That's really good. That's awesome. Yeah. How that's about you, awesome. Val? Well, there was a lot of great truth, but so I many. really uh, love verse 5 through 6 where Simon, again, the same thing, Peter, he is obeying. He actually obeys, and he went out 
with the authority. He went out the second time because he said, if you say, Lord, I'm going to do it. And he took Jesus' authority. He went out and trusted, and then the miracle happened. Mm. And that's part of it. I remember all the years we, we did mission trips, and our kids would say, why are there, you know, why do we have miracles on these trips? And it's like, because you're out of your comfort zone, you're out where you have no, you know, mm. in, in that country, mm. and you trust God totally, and things happen. Mm -hmm. I love Ephesians 3.20 talks about that. Now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than all we yes. ask or imagine according to the power that's at work within us. Yeah. And that's Jesus' power. Mm -hmm. But just imagine for a minute what would happen in the world if we would all obey God's yes. command mm -hmm. and truly walk in the authority he gives us. He, he has given it. He's died on the cross. He's done it all. I love verse 11. At that point, they left everything and followed him. Mm. How many of us could leave even like one or two things? We have all kinds of little mm. things. Robin talked about that, getting rid of the junk. Leave it. When we realize this world is not our home, it's easier to leave the junk of life fully behind and trust and obey God. Mm. Then he can really use us through the power of his Holy Spirit and miracles will happen. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember that song? Uh, we used to sing it in Sunday school, Trust and Obey. Yes. Yep. There's no other way yeah. Yeah. to be happy in Jesus but if to trust and right. obey. Yes. It's, it's simple, but it's hard to do. Yeah. In, in human nature, which yes. every day you got to deal with that. Right. Yeah. So. Oh, so <laughs> good. So good. Um, Robin had her tweet moment. Remember, she said, okay, get this mm -hmm. out and treat, tw tweet it. And uh, so I kind of wanted to talk about that for a little bit. And it says, transformation does not happen in the shallow waters of your faith. Mm -hmm. Transformation does not happen in the shallow waters of their faith. So we've got to go deeper. Mm -hmm. But what I was thinking about that was, is that deep is kind of relative. Mm -hmm. You know, we in ministry, we often look at one another and we see somebody who may have been in ministry for such a long time. And we think, wow, they are really out there. They are really out there in the deep. And I remember doing that, especially when I was young in ministry, looking at these amazing women and comparing my level of deepness mm -hmm. to somebody else's level of deepness. Um, this summer we had our kids, our grandkids, and we were at the lake and we were at the river. And our youngest, um, we have uh, two littles at, at uh, three and four. And they, you know, their level of deep in a lake or a river is much shallower mm -hmm. than the level of deep mm -hmm. for the older ones mm -hmm. who can get out there, who have treaded that water before, who know how to swim. Mm -hmm. And so, and as I watch them with their daddies, especially, especially little Clive, he's not so much into the water. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as his daddy was like, you know, Clive, come on, we can do it. I've got you, I've got you, Grandma, you know, or I'd say, Grandma's got you, you don't have to be afraid. But he's like, you know, going out there and, and isn't that how the Heavenly Father is with mm -hmm. us? He's like, I'm calling you into the deep. Transformation isn't going to happen in the shallow, but you got to go through the shallow to get to the deep. And I think that it's important for us in ministry to uh, not only judge ourselves, but then to look at others and not be so critical of where they are in their level of deepness. Mm -hmm. For those who are just getting in the water in ministry, mm -hmm. you know, they've got... They, they may be deep in their faith, or maybe they are just newly saved and into the ministry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that I think that's a really uh, great perception and, and way to consider the shallows, you know, the shallow waters and the yes. deep waters, that that's it's good. it's very individual, isn't oh, it, yes, for where we is. are yes. all at. Good yeah. point. Awesome. Then she made these seven, uh, seven yeah. steps. And I want to talk, uh, jump to those for a little bit. And so, um, again, so many, and I think each one of us can, can write a sermon out of each one of those steps. But I'm only going to let you pick one. Um, so, Valerie, which one of those steps do you feel like God is speaking to you? This is about getting ready, stepping out in our purpose. Um, mm -hmm. And so what is this, that, which, which one of those is, is I think, God speaking? I think with everything going on in our world right now, getting away from toxic things was huge. And I, I know a lot of people going through things and they're not living in, in the, the, the freedom God wants us to live in. So, you know, shut off the news once in a while. Just take a break. Mm. Uh, the people... The people you're with is huge. And she talks about that, having godly people around you. Yes. Your thoughts. Hello, women. I mean, how much of our junk is in our mind? It's like yeah. 
what if this happens? What if, you know, it's just, it's, it's a endless circle of craziness, but it's a daily battle for all of mm -hmm. us. We all deal with it, but so much negativity, fear, et cetera, swirling around in our lives. It just takes you down. Yeah. And when you focus on it, it's, it's the worst, but we need to take those bad thoughts captive. Don't be anxious and think on what's good and true. Philippians 4, 6 through 9 is a phenomenal scripture, and I don't have time to read it all, but it talks about not being anxious and trusting the Lord and thank Him for what you do have, and then go on and think about the good things, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is true, whatever is lovely, admirable. Think on these things. And when you do that and do what God wants you to do, His peace will be with you. Yeah. That is a promise, ladies, and I'm telling you, we all need God's peace right now. Living in fear is not a good way for Christians to live, especially if you profess to be spirit-filled walking in God's authority. So shut off the TV once in a while, take a break from the negativity, and just get in God's word and trust him. Amen. Step out. I have the privilege of sitting in staff devotions every every Tuesday and your husband gives amazing mm -hmm. leadership lessons and one of yeah. the things he was talking about was on fear in that in that scripture and he had mentioned you know we all we all get fearful right and then mm -hmm. sometimes we can condemn ourselves about oh I shouldn't be afraid mm -hmm. but um, but he made this really great distinction as he mm -hmm. said when we are stuck in fear mm -hmm. when we that place where we can't get out then that is an indicator that something is broken that's good. That fear in itself, you know, we address the fears. We address the, those concerns. Mm -hmm. But when we're stuck in fear, mm -hmm. then that means something is broken. Mm -hmm. And we need to address that. And mm -hmm. I just thought, Psh, wow. that was that was really yeah, a, that's powerful. a yeah. powerful statement. Yeah. So, Linda, which one are which which one of those numbers are are, are you going to? I'm going to talk, talk about, about number two. Ask God for his divine guidance. Mm. Um, she says, sometimes we are guilty of doing, then asking God. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, and of course, we need to ask God first mm -hmm. and then uh, get his divine guidance. And the last time Simon Peter let down his net, it was not because of his experience mm -hmm. of being a fisherman, his mm -hmm. ex expertise, but he was simply doing it because that's what Jesus had told him to do. And so asking uh, for, divine, for divine guidance. Um, I am so guilty of moving in my strength, my <laughs> power, and not depending on God. Mm because I'm saying, oh, I'm exhausted. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm working 25 hours out of a 24 hour day because Linda is doing it in her own mm -hmm. strength rather than calling on the divine. And when you call on the divine, hey, you might even walk on water. Huh? <laughs> hey, that's pretty <laughs> man, sister. <laughs> For sure. That's right. <laughs> so, so yeah. Asking God for his divine guidance. That's what we need to do. First. Amen. That's, Amen. Yes, that's first. 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 Yes. That, first. That's yep. so good. Yes. That's so good. I, I would say I'm guilty of that too. You know, yeah. you get in, in, into something, it's like, oh, wait, I forgot. Yeah. I forgot yeah. to ask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they so spell good. God. Uh, I should have asked you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're crying for help. Right? Yeah. I'm drowning here, Lord. That's because you're out trying to do it on your own. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think for me, one of the things that uh, stood out was number three, which was acknowledge what comes naturally to me. And, um, and that could be, you know, your, she mentioned skills and strength and even the pain mm -hmm. that we should not ignore right. who we are. Mm -hmm. And that was good. I think that um, sometimes when we are when we are acknowledging who we are and the things that come natural to us, that sometimes we feel like, oh, this is too easy. This must not be very spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes like people will say, oh, Terry, you know, you just like, it just comes so natural to you. And, and I have to work so hard. And I'm thinking, oh, is this not, maybe it's not very spiritual. Maybe, maybe <sighs> I should be doing something different because really should ministry in some regards be this easy because mm -hmm. I love it? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> because God has 
has gi- that is who we are when we yeah. are not when we are working yeah. in those gifts because it is a gift yeah. it is a god mm-hmm. thing's given thing that comes and naturally to us exactly mm-hmm. then it we shouldn't ministry shouldn't be all that hard now i'm not saying that we don't have trials and trials and tribulation yeah. Yeah. i mean hello yeah. we're living in that yeah. year yeah but not to ignore who we are and what comes natural to us. And it is okay to flow in that. It is okay to move in that. Mm. And I like that because that gives me permission. Mm. That gives me permission to do what God has called me to do and the things that I love to do. Mm. And he's smiling. He's saying, that's okay. Because mm. that's the way that I made it. Yeah. I made you mm. to Praise love Lord. your grandbabies and, and get out there with them, you know, and what, uh, whatever it uh-huh. is, whatever has yeah. come natural mm. to us. And so I really just want to like give people more permission go do natural, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. what is natural uh, to us. Yeah. And I think that in, especially in this day of, um, of ministry where we can see what everybody else is doing mm-hmm. and we think, oh, they're so natural in front of the camera because yeah. hello, everybody's a televangelistic now, you know, but televangelist <laughs> if you are in the ministry um, or they are just, you know, the, the camera just loves them or they're so good behind the camera or this just is so this or so that. And then we feel like, oh, this is, you know, the comparative itis sets in mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. comparative itis, comparative itis is a very dangerous disease. It is. And it is. I suffer with it way too often. And really mm-hmm. that is an insult on the Lord mm-hmm. because it's saying what I have is not yeah. good enough. Yeah. And I have to ask, you know, Lord, forgive yeah. me because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. And we're all unique. We are he all unique. He made us unique. all special yes. to do our, be in our giftings. And if we aren't doing it, then it's not getting done right. So That's right. Because there's only one are. Valerie. There's <laughs> only one Linda. That's there's right. only one Terry. That's right. To do what it is that we do. Mm-hmm. And there's That's only right. one of you. Yes. Wherever yes. God has called you, you yes. are the right person the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. And I don't want you wondering, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? This has been such a strange year. I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Remember, you are the right person at the right place at the right time. God has mm-hmm. called you mm-hmm. for such a time as this. It is time this time. Mm-hmm. It is time this time. Amen. So this has been such a great conversation, but the good news is, is that it does not have to end here. Saturday, we are going to be having our live table talks. You will go to our Just Between Us website and register so that you can receive the link for that. Yes, you do have to register, but it's free and it doesn't get any better than that. So (laughs) register and be a part of the discussion. You will register in individual groups according to your ministry. You get to select what group you want to be a part of. You will have a table talk host that will lead and guide the discussion just like we had here. We want you to be a part of that. And as a committee, uh, the three of us and the committee who's all working behind the scenes that you have not seen yet, we're gonna go back and we're gonna join Nerva and Seth as we sing a blessing over you. God bless you guys, we love you. God bless you. God bless you. right there where you are. Just open up your heart to the Father and receive his blessing over you. Thank you, Father. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you. Gracious to you, the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing amen with us.
us, Lord, today. Let us have peace in the midst of the fire. You go before us, Lord.